Welcome to a video tutorial where I'm going to implement, I'm going to read this paper in this video out loud to you. So if you ever thought, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to watch a video on YouTube where somebody reads out loud to me an academic paper with some math stuff in it. <laughs> you, you come to the right place. It is called Fast, fast Poisson Disk Sampling in Arbitrary Dimensions. Just to uh, kind of cover what that is, the idea here is that I want to fill a space with points. These could be, uh, you know, I want to uh, use this to create a, um, <laughs> I can't think of any good examples, like an ecosystem simulation where creatures are wandering around. I want to fill a space with food. Or I want to use these as seed points for some type of other generative growth algorithm. Or I just want to have a nice pretty dots pattern that then I color according to some image. And I want those points to be evenly spaced around and not overlapping. So let's look at how we can implement this algorithm. And I'm not going to read the whole paper. I'm just going to start from down here. And the idea is the algorithm takes, and by the way, just so um, look, you look in this video in the URL for this paper, and it's by Robert Britson from the University of British Columbia. And this is, I think, from, uh, I assume that this 07 means it's from 2007. So the algorithm takes as input the extent of the sample domain, the minimum distance r between samples. OK, so what does that mean? A sample, by the way, is each one of these dots. That's a sample. So I first will need a minimum distance. So I'm going to go to my code. Oh, by the way, what's my code doing right now? So I'm starting with this uh, code written in JavaScript using the p5.js library. And it just draws what has a loop to go from 0 to 1,000 to draw 1,000 random points in a window. And we can see that's happening here. And you can see that these points don't have that kind of distribution. They're overlapping. They're not kind of evenly spaced. I, this is a perfectly fine distribution. I don't, I'd have nothing against this particular pattern whatsoever. But uh, it's interesting to look at other patterns of what types of beautiful, beautiful, be be beautiful, beautiful things could emerge out of that. OK, so um, here we go. OK, so now back to the paper. <laughs> Where was I? OK, so let's go. OK, so r. Ah, so I need to add r. So I'm going to add a variable. R. And let's say right now we're going to start with, I want these points to be 10 pixels apart. That's kind of a reasonable value to start. And then a constant k. What is k? As the limit of samples to choose before rejection in the algorithm. Typically, k equals 30. OK, so well, that seems to me I can create a variable k equal to 30. But what does that mean? Limit of samples to choose before rejection. So probably in the algorithm, I read this before. I haven't implemented the code yet, but I did read this before, so I know. <laughs> but what it means is there's going to be some point where I'm going to try to do something a certain amount of times. And if it doesn't work, at some point I'm going to quit. And this is, this is telling the algorithm to quit after 30 times. And that's obviously, both of these are numbers we could play with to see if we get different effects. So now what I want to do is initialize an n-dimensional background grid. Oh boy, what the, what is an n-dimensional <laughs> background grid? That sounds complicated. Um, sorry, I just needed to get to my keyboard here. So what I want is to have a two-dimensional background grid, meaning I want to think of some sort of grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store everything in that grid in an array. So I'm going to make actually just one, I think I'm going to make a one-dimensional array. And that one dimensional array will number the in every single element in that or grid. And this is what I do. I've done this in countless different examples and things online, where uh, online, on YouTube, on the, on the internet, um, where um, uh, this is uh, where I have this one dimensional array to store information in it for a two dimensional space. Pixels do that, all sorts of things. So let me come back here and let's set that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it grid, and I'm going to make it an array. Now I need to think about what is the, what is this, this pen is, by the way, very light. Can you see this? Um, what is the size of each one of these uh, cells in the grid? So here it says, we pick the cell size to be bounded by r divided by the square root of n. r is the minimum distance we want between our points. N is the dimensions, two dimensions. <laughs> I mean, so interestingly enough, we could do this in three dimensions or in four dimensions or in, I was going to play some spacey music for four dimensions, but I, whatever. I, I'm not, I got to work on this whole soundboard thing. I'm not very good at it. Um, okay, so, uh, so, so that's something I need to calculate. And I'm going to calculate it. I'll just do it up here. Um, I'm going to call that variable W to be the, 
I have a black marker now, by the way, so you can see this better. The size, what's the width, what's the height of each one of these cells? Okay, so I need that to be uh, r divided by the square root of n, which is 2. So, uh, so you know, you can figure that out. But I, 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 you don't have to figure that out because the, the code will calculate that for you. Okay, so I have that. Now, um, so let's read this. So, okay, the grid can be implemented as a simple n-dimensional array of integers. The default negative 1 indicates no sample. A non-negative integer gives the index of the sample located in a cell. So basically, that big array is either going to have a negative 1 in it or, or another number in it to say, like, oh, there's something in that array. Right, so let's, let's start by, um, okay, so first of all, we have to figure out how many columns are there. Because the space is 400 by 400 pixels, and the size of each one of those cells is w. So I want to have, and I want it to be an integer, so I'm going to use the floor function. I want to take the width divided by w for the number of columns, and the number of rows is the height divided by w. And then what I want to do is loop through uh, every single spot, which is the number of columns times the number of rows. And in the grid, initialize its value to negative 1. So I'm starting with a grid. The idea here is the grid, <laughs> you just pick up a different marker each time, where the grid is just filled with, these are the index values, but the grid itself is filled with negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Because we're going to start actually putting points, filling that grid with values. OK. Are you still, why is this still interesting to you? I hope so. OK. So going back to this paper. OK. Good, 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 good. Ah. Select the initial sample, x sub 0. Whatever. What do I mean? Pick a random point. That means pick one random point. Randomly choose a chosen in uniformly from the domain. Insert it into the background grid and initialize the active list. Woo! OK, there's a bunch of extra stuff there. OK, so forget about this active list for a second. Let's say I need to pick a random point. That's not too hard. I can pick a random point. Whoop. So we're, we're, let's, let's see here. So this is. Uh, this is really, uh, in, if I'm reading the paper, this was step zero. And uh, now I'm going to do, uh, this by the way is no longer relevant. Now I'm going to do uh, step one. So which was pick a random point. Var x equals random width. Var y equals random height. And you know what? Let's make that a vector. I think it's going to be useful. A vector in P5 is an object that stores both an x and y. So I don't have to keep them as separate variables. Uh, let's make a, a vector called pause with an x, x and the y in it. OK, we're doing well. OK, so that was, there we go. So now, select the initial sample, chosen blah, 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 insert it into the background grid. So what does that mean? So if I pick a random point, Somewhere in this window, ah, da, 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 da. oh, I got to throw a dart, right? Ready? One, two, three. Ah, it worked. <laughs> Exciting live demonstration. Okay, so right, I picked this random point, and I can see that it's in spot eight. Unfortunately, I can't actually in my code like throw something and then just see where it is. So I have to figure out where it goes. And the, oh, did I? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, I have to, uh, am I back in the right place? Okay. Um, I have to now figure out where it goes. And how do I figure out where something goes? Where its column, which I'm going to call i, is the x position divided by w. Right? w being the size. That's that sort of scaling factor, the size of each cell. Um, and I also want to use the floor function to make that an integer because it's going to be an index into an array. And then uh, j is the y value divided by w. And so what I want to say is the grid, i plus j times the number of columns, equals that position. So this is me inserting it into the grid. <laughs> I pick a random x, y point. I find its column and row position, I'm saying i and j, in the grid. I make a position vector out of it, and I insert it into the array. So this i plus j times columns thing, this is a formula that exists in just about so many of my code examples. But it basically is a formula for taking a column position and a row position and figuring out, ah, if the column is 0, 1, 2, 3, and the row is 0, 1, 2, 
um, that the actual position in the array is 13. And you can see that is the column plus the row times the width. Z 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Yay, that formula works. So uh, that was kind of a quick explanation. I think I have a video somewhere where I go over that more. You can try to find it. <laughs> um, OK, great. So now we have that inserted. So that's step two. Let's go back. Oh, no, that's step one. Sorry. So now we've done step two. Ah, oh, but we're missing something. Active list. So this algorithm requires an active list of points that we are currently working with. And that's going to make more sense as I get further into this. <laughs> but um, uh, there's some interesting stuff going on in the live chat here. OK, so, um, so let me let's, let's create. I want to create another array called active. And what I want to do is also say active.push that position. So I want that position, that vector, to both be inserted into the grid. Remember, this grid is an array now that has negative 1 everywhere, except for this one spot that it actually has a vector. And then what I want to do is I'm going to um, add the draw function back in. I want to say background 0. And I just want to say I want to loop through the grid just to make sure things are working. And I want to say uh, stroke 255, stroke weight 4. And then I want to say, sorry, I want to say uh, point uh, grid index i dot x, grid index i dot y. However, I only want to, I want to loop through the whole grid and draw all the points, but not if there's a negative 1 there. <laughs> so I want to say as long as grid index i does not equal to negative 1, then I can draw the point. So I just want to be able to see what's going on. And then also I think it would be useful to look at all the active points. So I'm also going to loop through the active array. This is really mostly for debugging, but I think it might also make kind of an interesting pattern. And I'm going to say stroke 255 comma 0 comma 255, stroke weight 4, and I'm going to uh, draw a point, but this time um, at the active spot. Okay. Uh, there we go. Whoops. How's this looking, everybody? Live reload going. Let's take a look. Oh, so we have an error. Square root is not defined. Look at that. So this is, by the way, a very common P5JS problem. If you ever try to call a P5JS function outside of setup, it actually won't work because P5JS has not been initialized. The page has not been loaded until setup. This is like an onloaded type event. Yeah, I can get around that here just because it's square root by just accessing the JavaScript square root function directly. I'll just do that. Otherwise, I would have to move the square root function into setup. Call is not defined. Uh, Sketch.js line 15. Uh, this is columns times rows. There we go. OK, so you can see there's one random point. <laughs> That's also one active point. And you can see each time I reload the page, it's somewhere there. OK, <laughs> we're moving along here. We're trucking along here. <laughs> I'm getting somewhere. Now, I think, yes, yes, people in the chat are telling me to use a for each loop. I'm, I have nothing against for each loops, but I think it's a little bit more readable to do this right at the moment. Um, so let me go back to this paper. And now we're going to look at step two. This is the this is the tofu of the algorithm, right? This is where the main stuff is happening. While the active list is not empty, choose a random index from it. OK, let's start with that. So I have to say down here, let's put, let's put step two at the beginning of draw. And I'm going to say while um, active is not, uh, it, while active.length is greater than 0. That's, that's saying as long as it's not empty. Now, I'm going to make something a little bit different here. The algorithm has a while loop in, built into the description. In other words, it's saying, while this is true, keep doing this, keep doing this, keep doing this. But I actually don't want to do this. I want to make use of the draw loop, which animates, so I can see the algorithm animating itself. So I'm actually just going to say if, because I want to just do this one at a time, and it's going to come around and do it again with draw. So if active.length is greater than 0, what's the next thing? Uh, choose a random index, OK? So I'm going to say var index, I'll, just, I'll call that r maybe. r equals random active.length. And I need to floor that. That's a random index. And then generate up to k points chosen uniformly from the sphere, uh, spherical annulus between radius r and 2r. And oops, <laughs> sorry, I don't have my. <laughs> There's really no point to these sound effects. 
Um, okay. Ah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna be okay. Let's go. But let's, let's start with generate up to. Let's start with generate up to k points. I'm gonna say for var n equals zero, n is less than k, n plus plus. So I'm gonna do a loop at least k times up to k points, and then now this is kind of crazy. Uniformly from the spherical annulus between radius r and 2r around x index i. Let's talk about what this means. Uh, OK, so I have to find an eraser, which uh, I'm going to use this paper towel. So here's what we have to do. This is kind of a useful thing in programming to sort of think about. I have a point that I just picked. This is my random active point. Now, there is some value in our program called r, which has this distance. OK? So r, I don't know why I wrote distance there. r has some length. So what I want to do is pick another point around this point whose distance is somewhere randomly between r and 2r. So in other words, I want to pick any point that's within kind of this donut, right? I don't want it to be, it can't be within r, otherwise it's invalid. And I don't want it to be really far away. I want it to be between r and 2r. So how do I do that? Well, one thing I need to do is, one thing I could do is just pick a random angle, right? First let me pick a random angle, and then let me pick a random value between r and 2r, and I want to place the point offset from here along that angle somewhere between r and 2r. So that's what I need to do. So let's come back to the code. Uh, and what I want to do is say, so first I want to angle random to pi. Honestly, here's the thing. I could take some, let me do it long-windedly. <laughs> but I could take some shortcuts, because there's some functions in P5 that would sort of do some of these steps for me. But um, then I want to uh, create the offset values. So uh, offset x is cosine of that angle. Uh, offset y is sine of that angle, right? This is trigonometry that if I have an angle, I can get the, the sides of the triangle, right? The, from that angle with cosine and sine. You look for one of my video tutorials that goes through this math. So, but actually, what I can actually do, by the way, is just pick a random vector. So all of this, really what I want to do is say var offset equals p5.vector.random2d. Because what that's going to give me is a random unit vector pointing at, in some direction from here. And then all I want to do is make the length of that vector between r and 2r. So now I want to uh, create a magnitude, which is some random value between r and 2 times r. And then I want to take the offset and set the offset's magnitude to that random value. And then where's the point? That point, actually, I can just say offset add. Oh, wait, I forgot to get it. So the position, the position that I'm working with is from the active array, that particular, uh, so I remember I, I'm picking a random point from the active array, and then up to k times, 30 times, I'm going to pick random points around it between, between what? Between r and 2r. So now if I add position to that offset, this is really the point. And actually, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my variable naming a little bit. What I'm trying to do is make a new sample. So I'm going to call this sample. And I'm going to make a random vector. And then, and then sample is going to get the position added to it. So now that's that actual point. So I'm now done with this, uh, this particular step. Generate up to k points. I've done one point uniformly between r and 2r. For each point, check if it is within distance, oh wait, there's a mouse in the way. Check if it is within distance r of existing samples using the background grid to only test nearby samples. This is an exciting moment, <laughs> OK? I don't know if anyone is still watching this video however many minutes in. I might be like 20 minutes in already. This is like a video about Poisson disk point picking. <laughs> but this is a moment, because what I'm going to do here actually applies to a lot of other scenarios. Let's think about this for a second. Uh, I want to talk about what's going on. Let me find my marker. Let me find my paper towel. <laughs> OK, uh, let me come over here. So 
Let's think about this. There is a space, and that space is full of points. And I am working with a particular new point right here. And let's say I want to know, is this point too close to any of the points in the space? Most algorithms would say, I have to check this point against every other point in the space. And there could be, you know, something like 10 million points in a space. And this could take a long time, especially I'm doing this as part of some animation algorithm. However, the whole point of this Poisson disk thing that we're doing is that the points are registered to a spot on, the, on some kind of grid. And if the only thing I care about is, is a point too close to another point, if this point is within this spot on the grid, I kind of know 100% that I don't need to check these points, or these points, or these points. The only ones that are worth checking are the ones that are in immediate neighboring spots on the grid. And this allows a massive savings in performance. And in a flocking simulation, in a collision detection simulation, this kind of algorithm can also be used. And it's quad tree type stuff. I'll do some other videos on that at some point. But so let's look at how we're going to do that here. OK, now. Uh, so what I need to do is check. I want to check, OK, so first of all, I need to know where is this point in the grid. So I need to know its column position is sample.x divided by w. And I need to floor that. So this is where it's going to be in the grid. Then I need to know its row position, which is sample.y divided by w. And then I need to do another loop. Like I could check each neighbor individually, but let's do another loop, right? Uh, nested loop, i starts at negative 1 which is like the spot to the left. i is less than or equal to 1, which is the spot to the right. i plus plus. And then uh, j is equal to negative 1. Same thing. j is less than 1. j plus plus. And then what I want to do is I want to look at, uh, uh, I want to look at a point. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Um, uh, neighbor. I'll call it neighbor equals. Uh, the grid at i plus j times the number of columns. And I want to check the distance now between the sample. The distance between, and I can use the p5 vector distance function, the distance between the sample and the neighbor. And I want to do something. <laughs> this is going to, if, if that distance is less than r. Right? The whole point of this whole thing that we're doing is to make all these points on the screen where none of them are within this distance threshold. Okay? So this is very key right here. What do I do if I find one by accident that it's too close to? So let me go back to this and see. For each point in turn, check if it is within distance to R. Okay? If a point is adequately far from existing samples, then it, becomes, then it goes into the active list and it's good. OK, so we're trying to find, we're at 30 times, we're going to try to find a point that's OK. So here, what I think would work best is for me to create a Boolean variable like, I'm going to call it OK. <laughs> and I'm going to assume it's OK. Var OK is true. It's going to be OK. However, if that distance is ever less than r, it's not OK anymore. So I got to check everything. Now, here's a problem. I don't want to check. Ah, here's another. First of all, there might be nothing in the grid. So I only want to do this uh, if um, I only want to do this if the neighbor is not equal to negative one. Remember negative one, there's probably a different one. I might clean this code up later. <laughs> famous last, famous words of every single programmer ever. I might clean this code up later. <laughs> um, but um, here, remember, if something's not actually in the grid, we're just sticking a negative one in the array. So I only want to do this, right? If negative one. If there's nothing there, it's definitely not too close because there's nothing there to be too close to. So, OK, so after I do this, I want to check and say, after all of this, if it's OK, what do I want to do? I want the grid at that spot to be that sample. And I want active, I want to add that sample to active. So I, I'm, remember, I'm keeping two lists. I'm keeping an array of this grid. So I want to put the point in the grid, but I also want to put it in the active list because it's going to be another point that we could use later to pick a point next to it. OK. Uh, 
Boy, there's, um, okay. So now let's think, I, I feel like there's some, there's some sort of missing issue here. There's kind of an issue. What if, I, I, th I think I need to check, it's not written in, let's keep, let's keep reading the paper. Um, so, okay, emit as the next, uh, uh, okay. So let's, let me, I, I feel like I've, I've missed a step here that isn't explicitly written here, but I'm gonna keep going with what's written here. So, okay, so one thing we should do is say like, well, if it's okay, remember I'm in this loop to try this k times. If I find a point, I don't need to keep trying. So, um, or, or should I keep trying? Uh, generate up to k points. Ah, I guess I could keep trying. Uh, but, but I do need to check, I do need to figure out if I get to k and I haven't found a point, then uh, at least one point, then I need to remove this active one. So let's say, let's create a variable called found uh, is false. So I'm assuming, I'm gonna try now k times. If I find something, I'm gonna set found equal to true. Here is where I know I found something. So I'm gonna say found equals true. And then what I'm also going to do now is if I get to the end of this loop k, boy, there's a lot of code here. Um, if it's not found, what do I wanna do? Active.splice r comma one, right? Remember, the whole point is I started with a random point in the active list, and I tried to find points around it that are okay. If I didn't find any points around it that are okay, I want to take that point out of the list. And splice is a JavaScript function that removes an element from an array. Splice at the index r, oh boy, there's a big problem here, right? I've used r as the variable name for that minimum dis distance threshold, and then I just made a new variable r for that index. So I'm going to rename this to rand index. Let's use a better variable name, rand index, and then go back and uh, add that here. Okay, I can't believe I've written so much code without running it. It's a terrible idea, actually. I generally try to avoid doing this. Um, yeah, Taylor in the chat says, can't you break after o um, OK equals false? I think actually after OK is true. Yeah, so I was gonna put a break here. Um, let's comment this out and see how it works with or without it. Let's just put a little question here. Should we break? Oh, we'll discuss that later. So weirdly, <laughs> I kind of have all of the code right now. Right? If we go back uh, and look at this, um, we're done. Now, but I know that I, I in my head, I, I, there's something that I'm missing. Let's see if you can think about what I'm missing. But let's actually just try running it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> nothing's happening. You know, okay, uh, so there's a bunch of errors in my code. One of which, which is quite crucial, is that actually the, uh, this here is absolutely wrong. What I'm looking for, right, this nested loop where I'm trying to find the neighbors, I need to add the actual place that I'm at. So this should actually be column plus i plus, and I kind of hate the way that I've written this, row plus j times columns, but we'll leave it. Um, you know, I, I think I might like to say something like this, just to uh, kind of put this in a separate variable. Like calculate that index this way. Okay, so that was something I definitely was missing. Um, uh, so that's something I'm definitely missing. Let's see if we can kind of debug this a little bit. Uh, I, I'm, actually, I'm gonna, there's something else that I feel like I'm missing which is sort of crucial, which is that if I pick a point, and, and let's add the break there. Maybe the break is a bit of a problem. Uh, let's see if things are going. Uh, let's, um, whoa, okay, let's, okay, let's check the code. Oh, calls is not defined. Okay, so oops, one thing that I forgot is that if I'm going to use these in setup or draw, they need to be global variables. So let's do that. Ah, okay, oh, look at this. Amazingly, it's actually working. <laughs> I kind of thought for sure I had a problem. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Great, so we, we have an error, uncaught cannot read property copy of undefined. Let's see if we can, uh, the distance function uh, in draw uh, sketch.js line 52. So we have a problem here, and I think I know, this is what I was thinking of here, that um, what it, if neighbor does not equal negative one, well guess what neighbor could also be? Could neighbor ever be, or could sample be undefined? I'm trying to think about this. Uh, well, to me, there's an issue here, which, and I don't know if this would, this, this, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm thinking. 
I'm thinking that what this new point that I've picked, if grid, oh, oh, I know what it is, of course. So there's definitely a major issue here, which is that if neighbor does not equal negative one, or if neighbor, I think I could just say if not neighbor. And you know what? You know what would be better? Let's not even, because I could just fill it with undefined. Because um, undefined in JavaScript evaluates to false. Um, and then, uh, was there another place that I was checking negative one? And then I can just also say if not grid index i, which I think is a better way to do it. The reason why I want to do this is this is sometimes going to give me, what if I'm on the edge, right? If I'm, if I'm in the cell on the edge and I try to look to neighbor negative one, it's going to be undefined. So I also need to check for that. And if I come back over here, um, did I switch to the other screen there? I don't know if I did. Uh, so I'm still getting this issue. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What what happened here? Uh, sketch line 52. So let's look at uh, let's look at what the value of neighbor is. Undefined. Oh, if neighbor. I only want to do this not if not neighbor. If neighbor. <laughs> Cannot read property x of undefined line 78. Uh, if, only if, not if not, only if, boy, uh, here we go. Now we can start to see this working and we're getting this distribution. Now I kind of thought that I needed another check, but I'm kind of amazed that this is working anyway. I guess I don't need that other check. And you can see which points are active and which points are finished. And we can, let's just let this finish. It should get, um, now the reason why you're not seeing this happen really, really fast is because um, is because I'm doing it once per frame and P5 only runs like 30 frames or 60 frames per second. But I could now really, really, a couple things I want to check. One, I want to take this console log out. One thing I'm just curious, what happens if I take out this break? Yeah, then we can find multiple points per frame. So if I'm checking for 30 points around a point, this is, then I'm finding multiple points per frame. Doesn't really make a difference. I, I kind of like the animation better when I am, uh, enforcing just one point per frame. And look at that, starting from the bottom now. Um, but something that I want to uh, add here just to show you is I'm going to change this to a while loop. And look at this. So there is an issue with the code, which is that um, what happens when it, it's not finishing correctly. So I need to figure this out. Uh, right, so Taylor S is asking this question, how quick is it if it runs entirely in one frame? And this is not working right now. And I, 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 I even crashed the, uh, so, so let's think about this. Why is this not working? So I think there's an issue. This is an issue that I'm thinking of. When I pick, I know what the problem is. <laughs> what if I pick this sample point and there already exists a point in that spot in the grid? I could be stuck in an infinite loop because I could continuously just keep picking a new sample point. If the grid is ever full, I don't want to pick points anymore. So I think that I should add a check, right? If grid column plus row times the columns, right? If it exists, then, uh, then I don't, right? If something ex already exists there, then um, also skip everything? <laughs> Hold on a sec, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm back. And to debug this, um, which I just did, and you can find the live stream version of this if you want to see that about like 15 minutes of me figuring this out. Uh, I've changed the frame rate to one. And I'm looking now and seeing like, whoa, why is it generating all of these positions that are like way off screen, like negative 16 and negative 68, those aren't valid points in my space. And I forget, I always forget that a JavaScript array is this dynamic thing. So it has no problem just saying like, oh, okay, you're generating points off the screen. I'm just going to keep adding them as opposed to giving me something like an index out of bounds exception, like, oh, you generated a point that's not part of your original grid. So I need to protect against that in some way. And the way that I think I could do that right here is, um, in the same way that I am checking 
to make sure that this is not um, that this is a, a spot that's not already filled. Um, what I can also check is that column. I want to make sure that column is less than columns. And I only can go forward if the column is actually on the screen and row is less than the total rows and it is a spot that is empty. So that, if I add that in, we should be able to watch this now. And if I run this, I shouldn't see any points being generated off screen. So let's look and see if this is working now. I'm going to console log the length of the active array. And I'm going to get rid of console logging where that point is. And I'm going to put the frame rate back. <laughs> and I'm going to run it again. And we should see Obviously, I only checked, not obviously, because apparently not obviously to me, I only checked if it was off the right-hand side or the bottom. So I need to also check if it's greater than zero or if it is, uh, 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 or if it's greater than, and actually zero is perfectly valid, so greater than or negative one. I could say greater than or equal to zero, all of these as well. This is a very awkward if statement, so maybe I can figure out a better way to write that at some point. And now you can see, there we go, active got down to zero. And you can see how it fills up rather quickly. So let's go back now. And I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to make the screen again 400 by 400. And I am going to uh, give myself some more space to see this in. Uh, I'm going to make R back down to like 10. And I'm going to run it. And you can see now here it is filling the entire window. Now let's just see if I actually put in a while loop here in draw. And I can also say no loop so it only does it once. And you can see, boom, each time I refresh, it, it, you can see I get a completely different distribution very, very fast. And I could make this even higher resolution. I'm going to get this image very, very fast. I do kind of like watching it grow, though. So let's see if we can make some, something a little prettier out of this. So one is we see the active points um, and the non-active points, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, one thing that I might be curious to do is change that R to like 4 and change the stroke weight to one. And then also, I think what could be interesting is, let's actually have it pick more than one point per frame. Uh, so I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna say four of our total equals zero, total is less than five, uh, total plus plus. So this, I'm just gonna do this whole thing uh, five times per frame. I don't wanna draw everything five times per frame. And we can see now, you can see it growing kind of faster. Ooh, look at this. I have a stroke weight four somewhere else. Uh, and you can see, look at this kind of spacey thing growing. Uh, I think it's even actually kind of uh, beautiful. Let's make this, I mean, you can now stop watching this video and go and grab my code and play around with this. But I could do like 25 at a time. It's kind of nice to watch it grow. Um, you know, I could even make that R like two. And you can see, look at this kind of amazing, uh, what I'm getting, that you can, uh, kind of pattern. And then I could also think about, uh, what if, uh, as I'm drawing these points, I did something like I said, color mode uh, HSB. And I used the color to be, so um, this is just the active. Let's get rid of the active points for a second. What if I said, um, the color is I modulus 360. Uh, 255, oh, 100, 100, I think are the defaults. So you can see something interesting happening here. Uh, and maybe I should say something like uh, I divided by 100. Um, you can see I kind of am getting this rainbow pattern out of the growth of points. So um, that's interesting. This is not what I was expecting. I, oh, because I'm doing it based on where they are in the grid, not their order of when they were added. So you know what I would need to do? Uh, um, um, oh, oh, some people are making great suggestions in the chat, which I would like to, I, 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 this video needs to be over soon. So this, by the way, is just giving you, you're just seeing the stripes because it's just drawing them according to the grid pattern. But what I want to actually do is have their order. So let's have another array. I'm sure there's a bunch I'm going to call it ordered. And every time I add a sample to the grid, a valid sample, I'm going to say ordered.push sample. 
So I'm just going to make a separate array that just has them in order. And then actually what I would like to do is uh, draw them based on the order. And whoops, uh, and I need to do this as well. Uh, uh, order, ordered, I called it ordered, I think, right? So if I add this now, uh, we can see, and I don't need that divide by 100 anymore. You can see now their color is according to when they were created. And this is a bit too, uh, you know, too extreme. And um, you know what might be nice, by the way, is to just have my stroke weight be R. Uh, because then you can see, there we go. Um, and let's, you know what, uh, just so I can see this more consistently, um, let's add, always start the point not random, but actually have the first point just be in the middle. And there we go. Okay, so now we have fast, animated, Poisson, <laughs> disk pointing, evenly distributed. And uh, one of the suggestions, and really actually, unfortunately, the way that I've written this, because of the way that this should really be divided by two, or times 0.5. Um, uh, there we go. So that, that way they won't be overlapping. So you can see this is kind of an interesting uh, algorithm for seeding these points. Um, my, um, somebody in the chat, uh, yes, I am addicted to HSB. You know, I'm going with the rainbow theme. If somebody, I, I should really think of a different way of doing it, but it's my theme. Um, so if somebody, uh, somebody suggested, and this is an interesting thing to think about, how could you start with larger points and then slowly over time have smaller points and have that distance threshold be something that's variable and that grid be something that's variable. That's kind of probably quite a complex program, problem which I would like to think about and do future videos on. Okay, so thanks for watching this video about uh, Poisson distribution of points in a two-dimensional plane. See if you can expand this into three dimensions. See if you can change the sizes of these, find a different way to color them. Uh, use this as a way of seeding another type of system and um, what kind, whatever creative possibilities you build out of this, uh, build from the code that you'll find in this video's description and keep me posted and share on Twitter or wherever you can share it and I'd I'm excited to see what you make. Okay, goodbye.